1.3 kilograms and something that is literally the size of my hand coming in with dimensions of 210 mil by 140 by 38 mil deep. This is the Intel NUC 8i7 HVK with Vega M GH graphics on board. Now the price tag, bare bones kit is $1,000 US and if you're in Australia, 1,400 Australian dollars. It is unofficially going to hit the streets in late May. Though for this price, you will have to add in still your own DDR4 so dim memory and also your own NVMe storage. However, there is two slots available for both the DDR4 memory and also two NVMe slots available where you can add in a SATA or a PCIe solution. However, what makes this small unit so impressive, and I'll pull up the benchmark here for you guys, is that Firestrike 3D Mark score, where the GPU is getting over 10,000 points. So just by seeing this figure alone, this thing is so much more powerful than any small form factor solution that has come before it. It's even more powerful than a GTX 1050 Ti standalone desktop solution. So today, we're gonna delve deep into the details of Intel's latest Hades Canyon NUC. Welcome back to Tech Yes City. This is Brian coming to you guys today with a review of Intel's latest and greatest NUC. This one here, the HVK, that's how I'm going to refer to it in this review, comes in with the i7 8809G CPU, four cores, eight threads, latest IPC, 14 nanometer, and it also turbos up to 3.9 gigahertz on all cores. And of course, that Vega solution, 24 compute units. However, there is the lower spec HNK variant, which also comes in $200 US cheaper, or if you're in Australia, it comes in with a total price tag of 1150 AUD. That carries the i7-8705G CPU. From what I can tell, 100 megahertz slower on the turbo boost speeds, but also only has 20 compute units on the GPU side and lowest clock speeds on those GPU clocks as well. Though, of course, without wasting any more of your time, let's roll up a few more benchmarks here. First of all, GTA 5, Normal settings at 1080p. This generally stresses the CPU. You can see here that this VegaRAM GH solution is really kicking it. And I've decided to test it against small form factor solutions. And we can see that it's beating out a 1050 Ti comfortably. And also the CPU, even though it's very intensive on this game, does score pretty well, scoring over 150 average FPS. Very impressive. Moving across the Dota 2, this trend does continue. And this is high, so this is actually max settings at 1080p. And this thing is scoring well over 100 FPS. So if you're a competitive gamer, you could turn the graphical settings down and still get a phenomenal experience out of the NUC. Going across to Fortnite, one of the most popular multiplayer titles out there today. This thing scored over 190 average FPS at 1080p low settings. Of course, you've got the flexibility to up the graphical details if you so wish. And then moving over to a very popular competitive title, Rainbow Six Siege. This thing scored over 140 average FPS. Though continuing on with CSGO, I copied a popular player called Scream, his settings. We've got four speed MSAA. This unit scored over 200 average FPS in the benchmarks. Of course, the 0.1% lows were pretty low in this benchmark, but I believe that's got to do with that four speed MSAA setting. And the last benchmark I'm going to pull up for you guys is PUBG 1080p, and I decided to put this on high settings this time around. We can see that the NUC is scoring close to 60 FPS, so it does make this a playable experience. And the other solutions here really tanked. Even a 1050 Ti was going under 50 FPS. So the NUC definitely has the power when it comes to gaming. And what about VR? Since this HVK model here does say on the box, it's unlocked and it's VR capable. So when I ran it through a superposition HTC Vive optimal test, it was giving me a score of over 6,000 points and saying that this unit is more than capable of playing VR. So if you've got the latest headset and you're on the go and you're on the mobile and you want to get a good experience, the NUC will yet again deliver it. Though besides that small form factor, what else does the NUC offer? Well, pulling up a Cinebench score here, we've got over 820 points multi-threaded score and also a single threaded performance going over 160 points. So it definitely has the grunt to even do 4K video editing. When I tested it out with Adobe Premiere Pro, with a 4K render, 13 minute file by the way, 25 megabits per second, this scored under 20 minutes. So it wasn't real time rendering and it's not 8700K overclock performance, but it is impressive. And so if you do need this for mobile video editing, which is something I would need this for, 
this thing is going to deliver. Now, of course, you can support up to 32 gigabytes of DDR4 memory in so dim form. NVMe storage, again, two slots. So you can use Optane with this as well if you wish to. And of course, the performance on the Optane drives was impressive too. Boot up times were less than five seconds, which is very impressive if you're into quick boot up times and getting into the action straight away. Now, of course, you're probably thinking, well, this unit's too small with all that power. Surely it couldn't cool it down. It actually does a really good job of cooling. When I tested it out Nida 64 max stress test, it was scoring 91 degrees on the CPU. This is in a 25 degree ambient environment. So the cooling solution was doing a decent job of keeping the i7 under wraps. I'll let you guys have a listen, however, to the noise on both idle and full load. So quite simply, when you're not using this unit, it will remain whisper quiet since it doesn't use up much power at all on idle. And when I tested it in Dota 2 with 1080p high settings, it was scoring just in the 120 watts range while still giving out a really good figure in terms of FPS. So it does have the power efficiency as well to match. Going over the top of the unit, there is this skull logo that lights up. It's got individually controlled RGB on the skull and the eyes itself. And you may notice that the buttons throughout the B-rolls on the B-roll I've shown already does have its own RGB lit controls. You can even change things like the power button to relate to network activity if you wish to. So the power button can flash if you're sending packets in and out. So the lighting isn't just available for the aesthetics, it also has a functional purpose too. And you can change this in the included software utility that comes with your driver package, or if you want to tune up the system itself, you can install the Intel Extreme Tuning Utility, which does look very familiar to the DZ87 motherboard. That was the Haswell motherboard that Intel released. There's also the option to go into the BIOS if you wish to tune the settings manually and save them from within the BIOS, or in the utility itself, since it's so easy to use, you can change things like clock speeds on the fly. I did manage to turbo it up to 4.2 gigahertz on all cores, However, the temperatures and the speeds out of the factory, in my opinion, are the best and the most optimal settings to use. So the Nokia does have gaming covered, it does have productivity covered, and it's also got a plethora of input and output to choose from. Going over the rear of the unit, you've got four USB 3.0 ports, also a HDMI 2.0 out. You've also got two NICs included, one gigabit per second solutions, an Intel i219V, and also an Intel i210. There's two mini display outs, and also two Thunderbolt 3s, which can double down as display outs too. With the included front out as well for the HDMI 2.0, you've got six display outs in total, which will officially support up to six monitors. So if you're a mobile trader, you can use this and get good results as well. Moving on with the rear of the unit, there's also the DC jack in, and besides that is an optical out, which will support up to 7.1 surround sound. So great with a VR headset. Moving over to the front of the unit, there is a four pin audio out mic in hybrid port, and also a type C besides that. Then there's that HDMI 2.0, as we mentioned before, and two 3.1 USB type A ports, one of them being a charging port as well for lightning fast charging. There's also an SD card reader, and besides that is your power button. So ultimately this little knock here with its well ventilated honeycomb design is definitely leaving me in a tricky spot. I mean, first of all, it's a loan sample, so I do have to return it to Intel, which I'm devastated about. But also, if you guys have followed me for a while, you know I'm pretty big on mini ITX solutions. I'm very enthusiastic about it. I recently built the Inwin Choppin, which is currently my 4K mobile video editing solution. Now that case alone, even though it's got a small footprint, this is even smaller, but that case alone comes in at 2.2 kilograms with its included power supply. That's before you even add any hardware in. This being 1.3 kilograms with its 700 gram adapter leaves it at two kilograms with a smaller footprint that you can carry in a backpack and not even notice it's there. Not only that, it's got a much more powerful graphics solution than anything I'm used to in this small form factor. So now the only thing left that would stop you from buying this would be the price tag. A thousand USD for the HVK or 1400 Australian dollars or for the lower spec HNK 800 US or 1150 AUD. And in my opinion, with the amount of power this thing has in it and considering it's got the motherboard, case, power supply, CPU, GPU all built in, it's actually a pretty decent price tag considering there is nothing like this out in the market at the moment. So I definitely see myself buying one of these and then installing 32 gigabytes of DDR4 memory and also one terabyte NVMe storage because it is just that damn good. 
Intel have really blown me away with the NUC 8i7HVK solution, though I'm really keen to test the HNK and see what that's capable of if you do give it a bit of a bump in the clock speeds, not only on the CPU, but also on the GPU side. I think you could come close to the performance of the HVK. Remains to be seen. Anyway, guys, if you enjoyed today's review, please give it a big thumbs up. If you have any questions about the NUC, then be sure to drop a comment in the comment section below. Also, one thing I forgot to mention is it does have included built-in wireless as well, 8265, and also a 4.2 Bluetooth connection as well. So, I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now. Bye.